Welcome to our review of Chiseled, a deck sculpting card game. Thanks to Mark from Grand Gamers Guild for shipping us up a copy of this from Gen Con to review. A Chiseled was designed by Michael Epstein and features artwork from Nate Bersotti, Jason Butera, Tatiana Quigley, and Al Sway. It was published in 2020 as a joint effort by Grand Gamers Guild and Hopper Frog Games. This is a one to four player deck deconstruction card game that plays in under half an hour once you've figured out the scoring system. <laughs> this small box card game has an MSRP of $29.99 US. So in Chesil, you take on the role of a sculptor about to start work on your next masterpiece. Your deck represents your block of stone, and you're going to use various tools to remove cards from that deck, hoping to be left with a perfect sculpture that also impresses three randomly determined critics. For a look at what you get with a copy of Chiseled, we invite you to check out our Chiseled unboxing video on YouTube. Uh, there you'll see the game comes in a small box that contains a simple four-slot plastic box insert uh, to hold the four-player decks and other cards. You get a clear and concise rule book, some useful two-sided player boards, and that's pretty much it. The player boards are notable as they feature two different ways to calculate your score at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. You can either cho choose to score what's left in your deck or what's in your trash pile. The math on these is identical, but some players will find one method more intuitive than the other. Yeah, I also thought this was really cool. And when we play, different players will often choose different ways to use the scoring sites. Uh, now, the main component here, though, in this game are the cards. So these are of excellent quality, and they've been holding up really well to lots of shuffling. This is a deck builder. You will go through your deck probably at least once, if not twice. Now, the iconography on the cards is very clear, and the card design is quite brilliant, but it might take you a bit to get used to knowing where to look for what and what everything represents. My only actual complaint about quality here is the fact there's one promo card for this game, and it's not the same size as the other cards. That's not something going to matter for anyone who just picks up the box set. Okay, now that you know what you get with Chiseled, let's move on to an overview of play. All right, so you start a game at Chiseled by randomly dealing out a number of tool cards to the center of the table. Nine for four players or seven for any other player count. Then each player grabs their own deck and a player mat. The deck of critics is then shuffled. Three are dealt face up so everyone can see them. Everyone then takes a check-in timer card and then takes one of the unused critics and puts it on top, pointing at the five slot. This card also works as a rules reference as well as a timing mechanism. That's pretty much it. This game is super simple to get set up and playing. That said, this is the setup for a basic game. The mm -hmm. game also includes the Sincera or Without Wax expansion. When using this, players will also shuffle in an equal number of wax cards into their deck or 12 if playing solo. Now, the last thing everyone does before the starting player goes is to draw three cards from their deck. Then the player with the most chiseled chin goes first. Or just use Schwazi or some other method to determine who goes first. Each turn, you're going to select one of the face-up tools, the tool cards that are in, in play. You will do what it says on the card, then flip it face down. If all the tool cards are face down, you flip them all back over. You then discard any remaining cards in your hand and draw a new set of three cards. If your draw pile is empty, of course, you're going to shuffle your discard and it becomes your new draw pile, just like every other deck builder. Now, if the hand of cards you're left with at the end of your turn contains three sculpture cards, you're going to advance that critic track. If it reaches the end of the track, every other player gets one more turn and the game ends. Honestly, that's it. Pick a tool, use it, discard, and draw. It really couldn't be simpler. What's missing from this description, though, is exactly what all the different tools do. Mm -hmm. They are the meat of the game and include, include a number of different ways to remove cards from you or your opponent's decks. These include the flat chisel that has you draw three cards off your draw pile and trash or, and scrap any stra scrap that's drawn. The mallet that has you trash all the cards in your hand. The rounded chisel that lets you trash all the cards of one type from your hand and more, including my favorite, the <laughs> saw that has you name a material type and start flipping off cards from your deck and trashing until you find the material type you picked. Now, knowing what cards are in your deck will also help this make a little more sense. Your deck is made up of three different types of sculpture cards. There's arms, bodies, and heads. 
Each of these comes in three different materials, onyx, silver, and gold. There are nine cards of each type split into the three of each material. So you got three gold arms, three onyx arms, and three silver arms. Your deck also has 18 scrap cards in it. Now, once any player's critic track hits zero, the game ends. Again, everyone else gets one more turn, you go to scoring. Now, to get to the maximum points, you want your deck to contain exactly two arm cards, five body cards, and nine heads, and no scrap. Now, the player boards show the score you get for these amounts, as well as other combinations, if you didn't get the perfect sculpture. Now, it's worth noting, arms are only worth points if you have an even amount. Any scrap still in your deck scores negative points. Finally, if you are using that Sincera variant, wax cards are worth one point each for every player, except for the one who has the most wax in their sculpture. Instead, they're worth minus one for that player. Now, I know it sounds silly, and silly that you want nine heads on your statue at the end of the game, but it helps to think about it like this. Each card left in your deck represents how much time you're spending on that part of your statue, mm -hmm. say an hour per card. So you don't want to waste too much time working on the arms. They aren't the focal point of the statue, but you do want to make sure you spend an equal amount of time on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you want to spend an even amount of hours on them. The body is going to take a lot more work. You need to spend more time on that, but again, not too much. You don't want to overwork it. And then you get to the head and face, which is the most important part of your statue. And you want to spend as much time as possible on this part. Yeah, when you think of scoring and chiseled this way, it makes a lot more sense and doesn't seem quite so abstract. Now, we already mentioned above, but when scoring, you can do things one of two ways. You can look at what's left in your deck, as we just described, or you can look at what's in your trash pile. In this case, you're looking to have seven arms, four bodies, and no heads in your trash. Now, once you've scored your statue, there's one more thing to do, and that's check in with the critics. Now, remember, at the start of the game, at the setup, there are three critic cards laid out. These are going to award players bonus points based on what's in players' trash piles. The critic awards are based on materials, what materials you used on your statue, with various points being awarded for things like having more onyx than gold, or having the most silver out of all the players, having an even amount of scrap, and so on. Once you add any critic bonus points to everyone's statue points, the player with the most points wins. It's also worth noting that you can play this solo and just try to beat your top score. There's a solo score chart that will give you a ranking. If you are using the expansion, every wax card is worth minus one point. To make things more interesting, there is a card of solo challenges you can also use, which includes three challenges to make the game more difficult and interesting. I will admit this isn't a game I really enjoyed solo. It's much more fun to have more players. Uh, that way you're more limited in which tools you can use, because that's a big part of the game. And especially that last tool being stuck with it is something that's not going to happen when you're playing just by yourself. So it sounds like it's time to move on to our final thoughts on Chiseled from Grand Gamers Guild. So back when deck building was a pretty new thing and the interest industry was starting to get flooded, honestly, with various Dominion variants, and one of the primary strategies of most of those games at that time was to thin your deck down as much as possible to make a super sleek engine that you can just keep running over and over again. And at that time, I remember having the idea that it would be really cool that, that if that was the game, was just getting your deck as thin as possible. A game where you start with a super fat deck and the actual goal is to streamline it. Well, I gave this concept some thought and over time, I never did really come up with anything other than the concept. And now here we have Chisel, and while technically Xenon Profiteer before it, we have someone else using that entire concept brilliantly. Though I gotta say, they call it deck sculpting instead of deck building or reverse deck building or deck shedding. And that's why you can't patent game mechanisms. Yes, that's true. Now, the most impressive thing Chisel has done to me is perfectly integrate the theme. What a brilliant idea for deck deconstruction. Your deck is your block of stone. You use tools to remove cards from it. Like that's top-notch design for integration of theme and mechanics. Then you toss in the scoring system, which I love. Once you start thinking of hours spent and the critics being thrown in there and the theme just gets tied in even more. I actually can't think of many games that are this well theme integrated. Heck, a few weeks back, we talked about immersion in board games on our podcast. And I've got to say, there's some of that actual immersion happening here because you are literally sitting there choosing which tool to use to best sculpt your deck. 
you're dealing with what you have on hand. And if you use the wrong tool, things can go horribly wrong. And as with reality, you don't quite know the exact makeup of the material in the block you're working with. Yeah. So the wrong tool can gouge out your vision for the statue. And as for gameplay, it's just pretty brilliant. The deck sculpting system works and works well. There are there some things that might take a bit to click in. Um, I found with experienced deck building players that players have a hard time dealing with the fact that you're not actually playing the cards in your hand. Everyone has played any deck builder before, wants to play the cards in their hand and wants to play them in a set order and set up combos and that. The cards in your hand are only there to be either discarded to your discard pile or track. Nothing else. It's not the cards in your deck that do things here. It's the tool cards. And it's the theme integration that really helps push people into that realization. The mm -hmm. first time you saw through half of your deck, you can't help but get it. Yes. Uh, then, of course, is the sorry system, which everyone box at at first, I, at least now that I've got a way that it makes sense to me. Like I've, we've got our own head cannon for how scoring works in Chiseled. Now, when I teach the game, I explain it that way and people tend to grok it. But I got to admit, I was confused at first. Trying, Why do you want two arms, five bodies and nine heads? Like before reading the rules, I just assumed when you were when I bought this game that I was going to be trying to do two, two and or sorry, two, one and one. Like this isn't sculpting Cthulhu after all. <laughs> So time spent just ends up feeling right. Yeah. Now, my only real complaint about Chiseled is that it can start to feel a bit samey after quite a few plays. Now, this did take quite a few plays to get there. There are only 13 different tool cards, and with four players, you're using nine at once. So it's not going to be long before you've seen all the cards. And while, yes, different sets of tools and different combinations do change up the way the game plays and what you can do, the overall feeling really doesn't shift much. Now, the critics do get mixed up as well, but honestly, I find that the critics aren't nearly as important as the tools that are in play. I agree. The critics don't materially change the game nearly as much as one might think. They certainly don't make it entirely different from no. game to game. At best, maybe influencing a tool choice now and then. Yeah. Now, this is hap a game that I will happily play one or two, maybe even three times in a row. But then I won't touch it for a month or so only to bring it back out and play a couple more times in a row. Now, what I would love to see to battle this is an expansion, either just some more tools or perhaps some legs, right? Like to me, that's what's missing in this game. Where are the legs? I had a whole set of legs to the deck, nine different legs and nine in and, and three different metal types. And I don't know how many legs you need, but I think it would have to be like, the, maybe you need an odd number of legs. I don't know. Something to make it interesting, though. I'll, I'll have a hard time coming up with a time explanation for that. Now, the Sin Sara expansion does help, uh, actually. Uh, it, it, I enjoy the bit of take that that gets added to this game, but I don't recommend using that plane with only two players. It just gets too nasty. It's, it's too easy to just flood your opponent with wax and take the extra points. While I agree this would be fun to expand, and I expect rather easy to, I'm not sure how it would increase that replayability. Uh, yeah. And it might still get sh shelved from time to time after three or four plays. Yeah, that's true. Even if you toss in legs, I'll probably just play like about 10 games in a row when I've got the legs. And then I'll be like, oh, legs are just another thing. Overall, I love that this game exists. This is one of the best tie-ins of a theme to game mechanics I've ever seen. And I love seeing that someone else was able to come up with a brilliant way to make deck shedding work. Way better than I came up with. While the scoring system might see a bit odd at first, everything about about sh ah, chiseled. I almost said chiseled. That's now an S8. Everything else about chiseled is excellent from the component quality to the gameplay. Well, I can get sick of it if I play too many games in too short a time period. This is a game I end up returning back to after a break. Like right now, and while I was working on the show notes earlier in the week, I was talking about it. I'm like, no, I, I might just need to bring chiseled to Brenda's this weekend. Because I feel like playing it again. I could see uh, that as a sort of appetizer game at the start of a weekly game night, mm -hmm. perhaps waiting for the last players to arrive, or just as a warm-up. Totally see that. Now, if you dig deck building, you really should check out Chiseled. It takes a mechanic you love and flips it upside down in a really brilliant way. Now, if there's an actual sculptor in your game group, or if you've got a friend who's a sculptor, who's at least casually into games, this could make a really cool gift. I honestly think someone who's actually worked stone will find the concepts in here just make a lot of sense 
and would make for a fun gaming experience. Now, if you hate that building, I think you should give Chiseled a shot. Don't go and buy a copy, but like find a friend with a copy, do a demo, see if a local game store or a cafe, or a local cafe has a copy. You may just find that it's way more fun removing cards from a deck than it is adding. And lastly, for Take That fans, before to try with the wax out with the without wax that says Sarah variant. You're going to love toxing those whack cards into your opponent's discard piles while racking up some bonus points yourself. And that pretty much covers it. And yeah, I, I guess I just pretty much recommended the game for everyone. And I'm not ashamed of that. This really is a fascinating, unique, and fun card game. Well, that's it for our review of Chiseled, the deck sculpting card game. Have you ever come up with a mechanic but failed to make it work only to see someone else do it brilliantly? Well, tell us all about it in the comments below. Uh, before I go, I do encourage you to like, share, subscribe, or follow, depending on where you are hearing, seeing, or watching this. Uh, doing so really does help more people find our content. And I'd also like to invite you to check out my written review of Chiseled over at tabletopbellhop.com.